Okay, I think this is happening live. Okay. Make sure people can see this. And this is like technology all over the place. Um, can you see me on the live right now? Um, yep. Um, do you want to throw then a comment in? Because I don't have access to that, that just with the link. If anyone's watching this, that here's the link for the Google Meet. So, uh, Winston and Trish, are you guys there as well? Oh, yeah, he's over getting his stuff done. Um, yeah, so, here. so we're not recording the Google Meet, but we are record. Like, there's a Facebook Live happening. Okay. Um, are you guys thinking you're gonna come to Solvel? Uh, we are. Sweet, I'm excited. As long as you guys are okay. Oh yeah, we're okay with it. We can talk about it later too. I just thought while I have you here, I might as well. <laughs> we'll get it on record officially. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and if I ask in front, if I ask in front of the kids, then you have to come now. Um, I can see that there's somebody watching on Facebook Live. If you are watching, we are starting our live paint night at seven o'clock in a Google Meet. So if you get the Google Meet link from Facebook. You can join us and follow along. Um, some people in Facebook Live might just watch, but we're hoping that people will join us for conversation and follow along in the Google Meet. So, um, and, and Jenny's here running the Google Meet. When you speak, I'm hoping it is picking up on the Facebook Live. So my Aunt Sue, I can see you on the Facebook Live right now. If you can join the Google Meet, there's a link on my profile and then you'll be in the virtual classroom with us. So then we can talk to you. Um, Facebook Live is just to try and get people to know what's going on. And then in the Google Meet is where we're having conversations and uh, more information and sharing. When we share our screen and things, that's all gonna happen in the Google Meet. But so this will happen at seven o'clock and on the live, I just feel like I'm awkwardly talking to myself as we wait to get started. But in the Google Meet, there's lots of people that are kind of joining together. So I'm just gonna pause and we will get started at seven o'clock. And I'm gonna go grab my water. <laughs> and there's a few people that are joining us in the Google Meet and as you come in, I will uh, let you in. And if you're joining us that way, make sure that you hover over the Art of Math Ed photo so that you pin Laura as the larger picture in your screen so that you can see what she's, what she's doing. I'm just waiting to get started and I'm super excited about combining some art and math. <laughs> and I have my new mug, Jenny. So there's branding everywhere now. I have a special um, surprise that Jenny gave me. So we have matching mugs. <laughs> yep, I have mine right here too. Nothing like painting a sunset from a basement. <laughs> so there's more people. There's more people and Pam, my, my neighbor is in the, um, the Facebook Live. Make sure you find the Google link. So the Google Meet, the Google Meet link is on my page. It's in our Facebook page at Art of Math Ed. Um, oh, I don't have it on there. Um, that's where everybody is meeting to follow along. So if you're watching, you can watch the paint demo on Facebook, but if you wanna be um, participating and in the conversation, then you should join us in the Google Meet. I will also repost the link yeah. So we'll be getting started painting a um, a picture at seven o'clock. Oh yay, Alyssa found her way over. Yay! <laughs> yay! I saw you on the Facebook, and I wasn't sure if people were getting the. Could you hear me saying about joining the Google Meet? I did. Yeah. Okay. I went in the Facebook one, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. We thought like having the Facebook on might help people figure out where to go. Um, and also people that don't want to paint can just watch us on Facebook, I guess. But nice. um, as more people are joining, um, yeah. we will get cool. started. We are I know, know how to pin Laura, so she's at the top if you, because she's going to be the one you want to follow more so than me. <laughs> but I will also be painting on camera here so that I can hopefully yes. don't Pam. miss the Pam, we're waiting for you to join the Google Meet. You have to find that link in the chat and click on it and you'll end up with us in conversation. 
I can see people um, in the Facebook Live. I'm recruiting them over before seven o'clock. Perfect. Get some other. You want to not be? <laughs> you want to sit over here so you're not for the camera? You know what we were thinking? We're gonna do another one too for kids. Um, I mean, uh, kids can follow along with this, but also we're gonna do one that's uh, even more fun. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you'll be fine. That's wonderful. I hope you're going to share what you're doing. I, we're yeah. To we can learn from the kids. I feel like sometimes adults don't want to share what they're working on or they're too intimidated and kids just uh, have that creative spice of life ready to share. So we appreciate you joining us. <laughs> I'll be sure to mute when they get too annoying. <laughs> they won't. Oh, you will? Okay. Well then, Jenny has Jenny has master control to mute everybody. I, I have the power. See, I can mute you just like that. Yeah. Um, for people that are, I can see, that are still in Facebook Live, if you want to join us in Google Meet, you can. Um, there should be a link in the chat or on our Art of Math Ed. Maybe I should write Art of Math Ed on here. My beautiful sign that looks very uh, professional. Do art of math i'm running out of space ed go no you can't really see that <laughs> i can write go. another comment though i feel like you need to private message pam because i can see her live on facebook and she needs to be in the google meet pam's trying to figure it out right now just send her the link There'll be some late starters and they'll have to just do a little catch up with us when we start at seven officially. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna message her from... There's so many versions of things happening. I know, I can I see, uh, uh, shout out to Scarlett and Desmond right now. I love the setup that they have with their easels. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun to yeah. everybody. Yeah, it is fun. Don't turn your camera off, Desmond. I like to be able to creep in what you're doing. Don't you dare. No, we want to be able to see. Oh, oh he shut off his camera. He'll be back. Um, I don't, don't know how to message Pam privately, because she's not one of my, is she in her group? Yes, uh, if you just click on her name, you can send it, but it's okay. She can hear me and I know she'll try and figure it out. If not, people can follow along on Facebook Live. We are in Google Meet for anyone following upon us and I'll say that like a broken record until we get everybody in. I hope our instructions weren't too confusing. Um, but I think now is the time to relax and take a break or do an art stretch and say this, arr. <laughs> arr. What is a pirate's, uh, this is for the kids, what is a pirate's favorite letter? What do you think? Arr. Arr, no, it's the C. <laughs> Do you get it? <laughs> People that are on Facebook Live, we are meeting in Google Meet right now to start a paint night at seven o'clock and it's gonna be so much fun. You can watch us on Facebook Live, but all the action is happening in the Google Meet and that link is in the chat or in our Art of Math Ed Facebook page. You can click on the link there. I can see people joining the Facebook Live and I don't want them to miss out on the fun. Um, <laughs> Jenny, you have to... I will continue to post the link. I can't, it, when I go to our group, I can't message Pam. It won't let me. That's okay. Yeah. I can see so her. Will, yeah. she, maybe she doesn't want to talk to you. Maybe she wants to stay on Facebook maybe. Live. <laughs> too. That's, that's good too. Yeah. I think we'll just leave it running until we get started. 
or I could leave Facebook Live. If there's people staying in there um, and you want us to leave it running the whole time, I can just leave Facebook Live running. Just throw that in the chat. Um, I'm not sure if people are putting anything, but we could leave the Facebook Live running. Aw. My future sister-in-law is here. Hi, Katie. <laughs> so we have a, we, Katie, we have a Google Meet. You should click on it and then we can talk to you in real life. Um, so there's the Facebook Live where people can watch, but you can almost co only comment in the chat. And if you want to talk to people, like Winston is here, Beto's coming, Pam is watching. Oh, I can see somebody joining. Hello. Hi, Grace. Um, so if you're in the Facebook uh, Live, you should hop on over to the Google Meet link so you can join us. Hi. Oh, I think you're muted. Can you hear me right now? A thumbs up if you can hear me. Perfect. Okay. So the next step, um, Grace, is to make sure that I'm pinned on your screen because as more people join, my picture will get smaller and smaller. So if you hover over me and you click on the pin, it will make my screen the biggest. So hopefully I'm the biggest on people's screens so they can follow along easily. And I can see uh, Jasmine just joined. Hi, Lisa. Yay. We're just uh, so nice to see your face. We haven't seen you in so long. Um, this is going to be fun. So if you're just joining in the Google Meet, make sure you pin my screen so it's the biggest. Otherwise, it might get smaller and smaller for you. And all you do to pin me is kind of scroll over my face and touch the pin. How are you, Lisa? Get my stuff ready to go. Oh, you're muted. This is intimidating. We have an art teacher joining us. Ah! <laughs> so I have the ability to mute people, but I can't unmute people, which is probably... Oh. So people hard. have to be able to unmute themselves. And we still have a few minutes, as um, I can see... I'm getting some messages from some tech people oh, that sorry, I must have been muted. You were muted, yeah, but there you are. we saw your expression. You were you were very excited. <laughs> I keep forgetting to unmute. I do that all the time. That's okay. Nice. Yeah, so I was just saying, um, don't be intimidated because it's been a while. Well no, I painted, but like been a while where I like really sat down and was like, I'm going to do a painting kind of thing. We're gonna do this tonight. We're gonna start soon. Um and so, Lisa, you already know about Google Meet, how to pin my image to the screen larger? Yeah. Okay. You're already pinned. All right. What city are you in right now, Lisa? Um, I'm in Kingston now. Oh, wow. I know. It's been well, crazy. I, I had to sort of restart my whole teaching career up here. Yeah. Um, it was a hard choice leaving, but um, my husband, he got a job up in Kingston and we were commuting that like big distance. Yeah. And it just got crazy. So, um, but well, you know, I'm still teaching. Well, now we have a friend in Kingston that we know we can visit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes. And uh, I can see Sandra. Hi, welcome. We're about to get started. Sandra will know how to pin. You'll know how to pin this, right? So you can see it big. I'm super excited uh, that you're coming because Sandra is coming from um, science background. Yes. A little nervous. Um, I'm nervous because <laughs> I'm usually very just free all over the place and I'm, I'm, it's going to be interesting. So we're all in this together. <laughs> okay. And Jenny and I just appreciate that we're not standing here trying to paint alone. So all good. <laughs> Yay, hi Farron. And and Grace Grace, what city are you coming from? I think Grace is just getting set up right now too. Yes. So, so either um, I, as we ask questions for interaction, you can unmute yourself or you can also type into the chat if that's easier. Um, yeah. But we're hoping everybody will kind of join in and as we're going through the next uh, little bit of paint. Oh, my information on here is backwards on uh, Facebook Live. And so my aunt is helping me out. So thank you. <laughs> I hope this isn't uh, backwards. But if you are on Facebook Live, you're just watching. And we hope if you're painting and following along that you join us in Google Meet. So Google Meet, it will not be flipped. 
Um, Google Meet is where we're having conversations right now as we're waiting to get started and the link should be in the chat or on the Art of Math Ed Facebook page. So Bob and Debbie, I know you are coming and you're ready for action. You need to click on the Google Meet link in your private messages or on the Facebook page. And my Aunt Sue, jump on over <laughs> and come um, into the live conversation with us. Oh, it's a little... Hi, Jeff. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Laura. Okay, please, please just uh, complain because I haven't prepared all the materials for her. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I'm so sorry for her. <laughs> okay, well, as we're waiting to get started, I can review the materials that you should have. Uh, everybody should have some water because you're going to want to change colors and rinse your brush. And when you do that, you might want to wipe it on a paper towel. I have two paintbrushes, so I have a larger one and a smaller one. You only really need one, but the large one is for the, the larger spaces and a small one for a little bit of the detail. So two brushes, um, a ruler. So Miss Van Kestren is pleased with you and you draw straight lines and not crooked lines. Um, so you wanna make sure you have your ruler with you. Pencil for sketching. I can see people holding up that they have things. And of course your paint. So um, people complain that I save everything because I, I, like, I, I can't throw things away. So your, all your Tupperware lids are great palettes. <laughs> but if you have a palette, while we're waiting to get started, you can put your colors out on it. So I have the primary colors already kind of spaced out. We'll do this um, in a minute, but you can get your colors out on your palette while we're waiting. If you're watching on Facebook Live, welcome. We are in the Google Meet and some people are saying Google Meet isn't working. So we are staying on Facebook Live the whole night, but Google Meet is more fun. So if you can click on that link, um, we will let you in where you can join the conversation. So we have if the different- joining, If you are joining the Google Meet from a work-based account, oh. like, we have had a couple of temp values. Here's a tip. Okay, if you have a work-based account, the Google Meet might block you. So we don't want people who work joining us. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but if you have a school board account or um, a professional account that you're logged into automatically through Google, you need to log out of that and join on a fresh new page in Google to access the Google Meet. So in my Thames Valley account where I work, it wouldn't let me enter the Google Meet. I had to go into something else. So maybe, uh, Jenny, you could throw that in the chat for them. This is funny because we're juggling like multiple platforms, but I think we are going to get started. So welcome everybody. <laughs> Jenny and I are super excited. And uh, if you can throw in the chat, if you want to, what city you're coming from, we know we have people from different places and familiar faces. We will have opportunities for sharing and prizes and conversations. So we also know that this is the first time for a lot of people joining. And so in the first five minutes, we might have some tech glitches. Um, so as we work through those technology little um, blips, we might just randomly talk for the next couple of minutes to help those folks get into the conversation. Right, Jenny? I can yes. see people are here from Amherstburg and Kingston. Yeah, and St. Thomas near London. Um, some people from London as well, London area. <laughs> And I can see people saying hi. So as we're waiting to get started, the things that you can be doing is um, make sure you have all your supplies with you. Hi. <laughs> so tonight we're going to actually be, do we want to introduce ourselves? Because I feel like we know some people, um, Jenny and I, and other people are new to us. So Jenny, you go first and then I'll introduce myself. So if, if I don't know you or you don't know me, I'm Jenny Van Kesten. together to have a fun night of painting and we started art of math ed because we i was coming from an art background jenny from math and we realized uh the benefits for mental health creativity um for for me with the art folks uh, making math a little bit more approachable and more exciting because i wasn't necessarily 
to be honest, I didn't love math. <laughs> so um, connecting with Jenny was really fun because it made, made me see math in a different way. So that's like a little bit about our art of math experience and we're gonna be tying some of that into here tonight. And I think we should just get started. What are you thinking, Jenny? I think so too. It seems to be slowing down a little bit with the entries, but as okay. people come in, um, I can just kind of help fill in any gaps if they're a little behind. Okay, sounds, sounds good. So if you are just joining and you're, it's gonna be hard to see my screen, uh, make sure that you click and you hover over me and you pin me so I'm the largest thing on the screen. So that way when I'm going through anything, you can see it better. So Jenny, um, I don't know if we throw that in the chat for anyone that's just joining, but make sure that you pin uh, me so you can see this. And we will be doing some call outs and conversation with people as we go. But some of you, do most people like thumbs up or in the chat have an eight by 10? Um, some, some people might have a nine by 12. Oh yeah. Hi Jordan, nice to meet you. I can, <laughs> um, so this is an eight by 10 and it's landscape, so it's turned sideways. So that's kind of what we're working with tonight. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is drawing a horizon line. And so a horizon line is the viewer's perspective of where their eye line is. And because it's a landscape, it is where the, where the sky kisses into the ocean or where the sky touches the, the water for us in this case. Um, if the horizon line is up high, it's called a worm's eye view where you're looking up and you're going to have more water in that case. If it's down low, you're going to have more sky. So your focus is going to be on your sky, like a bird's eye view looking down. In this case, it's kind of more closer in the middle. And we know that we are working with an eight by 10. So halfway in the middle, half of eight to the math folks would be We've got some, some other participants here, um, those of you who are joining. What's half of eight? Maybe some of our younger... I just saw Kendra say four. So, uh, yeah, I think half of eight is four. So we don't want this to be smack in the center, so we're going to go an inch below for the horizon line. So what you're going to do, if you did bring a ruler, you're going to measure, instead of halfway, you're going to measure to three inches. And... Miss Van Kestren doesn't like crooked horizon lines, so she's going to want you to have a straight horizon line, uh, which means at three inches, you're gonna make a dot in several spots across the canvas. Don't just do one dot and wing it, or you'll end up with a crooked horizon line like me. <laughs> and potentially. Like the people that like to work fast, just like to measure three inches once and then just go for it. But if you want a straight horizon line, we're gonna do three inches, three inches, three inches. And the reason we're doing that is because we wanna have some sky and water to work with, but we don't wanna cut the canvas completely in the middle or it could be boring. So we're going to uh, have a little bit more sky at three inches. And then we're going to use a ruler to connect the dots and draw that horizon line in. Try not to push down too hard because the goal is that we're not going to see our pencil lines, but if you do, it's no big deal. We will be painting over it. So you're going to draw your horizon line right across in a straight line. My iPad holder, which I'm using for this canvas, is kind of gonna be in the way tonight, but I don't have the full professional setup yet. This is our first time doing this, so. <laughs> So the horizon line is three inches all the way across. Um, I can see some smiles in there. So I'm not sure, can you see this okay? If I do this. Uh, I can see it okay, Laura. And you can, Alyssa, you're nodding yes to you. I think yep. on the Facebook Live, the angle's a little bit, we're okay? I don't know. It's really, it is really bright on the Facebook Live. Okay. Yeah. Well, that means we just need to have really good listeners that can follow along without seeing it. <laughs> Okay, so we are three inches up, a horizon line all the way across. So halfway through the canvas, we know that the canvas is 10 inches, half of 10. Let's ask one of the, the kids, what's half of 10? Let's Over see. that way. Yeah. What's half of 10? Five. Five, all right. So we are going to look at where five inches. So we're gonna find the middle of our canvas, five inches over and we're gonna put a little dot right on our horizon line at five inches. 
So a little dot at five inches. That dot, the goal of it is just to show us where the middle of the canvas is. And we don't, we, sometimes this just happens naturally, but our eyes like things that are sometimes asymmetrical. So it's more interesting when something isn't smack in the center, because if it's off to the side, your eye gets to travel through the page a little bit. It's more interesting to look at. So if we know where the center of the canvas is, we can make this asymmetrical. So not completely identical on the same, and it'll make our, it more interesting to look at. So our goal tonight is to put things on this side so we can make it asymmetrical. Um, and in this case, we actually just learned tonight. So that I'm going to uh, focus on a special spot for Jenny and I in Southampton. And we found out in a Facebook group, it's not called a lighthouse. And we were wondering if anyone here knows, there's a, I thought it was called a lighthouse in Southampton. If anyone knows what is actually the proper terminology for it, we will put we will, that in the chat. Or you can turn on your mic. Um, so we will be drawing not a lighthouse, but something else. So as we were promoting this, um, somebody told us that we need to correct our vocabulary and understand what in fact it was that we were painting. Um, we were promoting that we were painting a lighthouse and we were told by an expert, and I think Grace might know, Oh, yes. Alyssa's guessing a light tower. Yeah, it's called the front range light. A range the light. Range, range yes. light, yes. Can you share with me? Grace, Grace, can you share the difference between a lighthouse and a range light? Well, the range light, there's a front range light and a rear range light. And when people come into the harbor, they line those two range lights up to know that they're coming in at the right angle. <clears throat> yeah. So thank you so much, because tonight we are painting a range light, not a lighthouse. And I just want to be clear for those people. <laughs> okay. We learned something new today, which is always Yeah, fun. super fun. Yeah. So and I'm, in, I'm in Southampton. I live here. Ah, okay. Well, we will awesome. we will get to see you in real life hopefully this summer then because we visit uh, Southampton. Well, we, we live up there in the summer. Um, okay, so with this range light, we're not going to touch the top of our canvas. So you're going to move a little bit down and put a dot off to the side. So the goal of drawing this lighthouse, and this is the most complicated part, will be to have a dot, and then you are going to make an angle towards that dot to draw the line of the lighthouse. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And this is where people start to stress out that their lighthouse isn't perfect. Um, so the other thing I wanted to quickly do is you don't have to necessarily draw your lighthouse by making a dot and following the vanishing point to make sure that it's on the right angle. Um, the base of my lines are, um, hold on here. In this case, they're below the horizon line and they're seven centimeters apart. But another way to just quickly do it is, does anyone know this shape where it's not a triangle because there's a parallel line on the top and on the bottom? So I'm going to draw it here. What shape that is called? <laughs> it's not a square. Desmond, do you know what it is? What? A parallelogram? Jenny? Almost. Almost. A parallelogram needs to have both sets of opposite sides parallel. So the two... These two are parallel, but these ones are not because they're slanted in. A trapezoid. A trapezoid. Okay. So to draw your lighthouse, you have two options right now. You have a dot up here at the top where you're angling toward it, or you can just draw a trapezoid, a trapezoid where they angle inward and then they cross off here. And then we're going to draw a square and then a triangle on top. So this could be a quick way of drawing a lighthouse without a ruler. So I apologize, Miss Van Kestren. Um, I'm kind of holding this up and sketching at the same time. So we have two options. You can do the trapezoid square and triangle, or you can put a little dot up here at the top, angle your line in, 
And then this is kind of where the bottom of the trapezoid would be with a, a square and a triangle on top. This is the hardest thing you're gonna have to do tonight. And I will tell you with expression and art, we do not need this to be perfect. This is going to get painted over. So don't worry about your lines. Um, I like my, uh, I, I keep wanting to say lighthouse, but my range light, I like my range light not sitting on the horizon line. Just like if we were to draw a boat, we don't necessarily want it to look like it's floating there. We want to move it down below the horizon line. So here's the horizon line. And the, my lighthouse is actually going to start a little bit below it. So if you did it right on the horizon line, no problem. Just extend the line down a little bit further. That way it looks like your lighthouse is kind of more in the water rather than sitting on top of the horizon line. This is going to take a little bit more time than when we actually get painting. So I wanna make sure people are ready before we move on. Um, if people are just joining on Facebook Live, you can follow along. Oh, and I can see other people got it right with uh, the range station or the range light. Trapezoid, square, triangle. For perspective drawing, we have a dot and we're making those lines go towards the dot. The lines go below the horizon line. And then I'm going to cross it off with, in Southampton, this is actually on a beautiful point that you can walk out to. So that's what that uh, area would be if I was walking down the, the pier. There's a little bit of a right angle drop right there because it's man-made. We know it's rare in nature to ever have that. And so you're going to just, I, I'm trying to make sure people have time to draw the lighthouse, but um, you could put some squiggly lines that represent the rocks in front of it. The other thing too that you'll notice is I drew a rectangle above the trapezoid. And this is going to end up becoming a silhouette so don't feel like you need to draw in too, too many details because we will be painting right over it dark. Um, so don't get caught up on the little things. So I have this little, uh, it almost looks like a balcony the way that it sticks out past it with a triangle and then a little stick right up on top. And there are more details, but we're, we're not gonna worry about those because we'll paint over them. In Southampton, there actually is a divide in the color. So this line, my horizon line, could be that divide. Um, Jenny, do you want to talk about if we were, uh, if, if this was going to be on a grid, what the horizon line would be? Yes, so if one of the other They thought they were yeah, coming to a, a fun paint night. What is, but what is the horizontal line called? Yeah, horizontal. Any guesses? You can put it in the chat. Is, two acts, but we have is there a letter that goes with it? There is a letter that goes with it. Near the end of the alphabet, that horizontal something. Depending on. So people in the, the Facebook Live were, were trying to find out what is this called, this horizontal line, if you were in math. And then there, what's the opposite of um, horizontal? Something that goes up and down. Starts with a V. Ooh. Somebody is saying, is it the x-axis? Yes. Okay, so we have a horizontal x and a vertical. And does anyone know what letter that would be? Why? Yes. This Jeff person seems to be a math expert over there. <laughs> and Aaron in the live. Thank you, Aaron. Oh, it's, oh, it's Grace. <laughs> All right. So we have um, the horizontal line. And how are people doing right now sketching in that, that light uh, range? Thumbs up that you have this sketched in a little bit. Okay. So we talked about asymmetrical balance. 
If you made it a little bit more centered, that's okay, but I'm just gonna check it out and I can see that my, my range is on um, one side, so it's asymmetrical, it's not centered completely. If you take pictures when you go visit this lighthouse, put it off to the side, it will be really beautiful. Um, the next thing, we're thinking it's going to be a sunset and um, we would like to do the sun over here to make it feel even more asymmetrical. So when the sun is super bright, you probably shouldn't look right at it, uh, but the color of it, because it's so bright, we're gonna use white and then gradually turn it into yellow. So at this point, if you don't have paint out yet, you can see that I've separated mine um, with white, yellow, red, and blue, so the primary colors. And I'm going to try to avoid mixing them at, at the start because I want to keep my white pretty clean because I'm going to use it more than once. So to get started, you're going to take a smaller brush because we're going to start with the sun, dip it in the water, and then dip it in white. And for me, I'm gonna put it in the center. And this is just pure white, or it should be. I was painting earlier and I can see there's a little bit of color on mine already. <laughs> so taking your pure white and you're going to make a circle or a sphere above the horizon line because the sun is about to set, but it hasn't dipped below the horizon line just yet. So you're going to uh, paint just like, almost like a white circle right here. And this is going to be very hard to see because I'm painting white on white right now, um, but you will see it more later. So just a white kind of blob above the horizon line. Right now it's, it is a ball, but as we know, sunsets aren't always perfect circles. They can be more scattered. And the beautiful thing about us doing a sunset is sunsets are always different. So they should not look the same as each other. So yours does not need to look like a clone of mine. It's actually better if it doesn't. So now that I've done this circle. Sorry, Laura, can I ask a question? How thick should we be putting the white on there? Like, should pretty thick or just sure. on the canvas? Thick is, thick, okay. thick is good. Mine's a little bit um, wet, so it's a little bit thin. But if you have thicker paints, mine are, are not as thick, but I like that because it adds texture to it. Um, so I have this white ball. And as we know, if we've all seen a sunset, uh, it kind of sparkles on the water. And we are going to paint the sky differently than we paint the water. The water is going to be horizontal brush strokes only. So this way, none of this. <laughs> so horizontal brush strokes only. And what, what number brush are you using? A 12 or a... This is a half angle. Half angle, half inch? Yep. So this is... Okay. I like how detailed you are. See, look, and Jenny and I actually did a number line with brushes and pencils before. Um, to compare it to a larger one, I'm kind of using a smaller one right now. But it doesn't really matter. If it's larger, you're going to get nice large blending. And if it's a bit smaller, then you'll get a little bit more streaky lines. And at this stage, because I'm doing some detail, I'm using a smaller angle brush. And doing the sun. And Pam, welcome. I'm glad you made it in. I saw you in the Facebook Live and I wondered if you were going to be able to come over. I'm good. Okay. Have my drink with me. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the we have the circle and now we're going to do the reflection of the sun in the water. And the reflection is going to I'm not going to touch the brush down yet. I don't know if this helps like if it makes it harder or easier to see, but I'm going to do longer brush strokes because where the sun is hitting the water on the horizon, you're going to see it more and then shorter brush strokes as I go away from it. So just to repeat that, Along the horizon line, there's going to be longer brush strokes. And then they're going to get broken and shorter as I get further away. And once I pull some color into this, you'll be able to see it better. I'm really just laying down some white because we want where the sun is hitting the water to be the lightest spot. So you're going to do a long line on the horizon and then a couple broken brush strokes that get smaller as they get further away from the sun. So you're trying to create that little bit of sparkle. I have one here that I started earlier that I can hold up closer. I don't know if you can kind of see the white the same way. So long white here, and then it gets broken and smaller that way. 
So one tip, we never want to put paint on the canvas straight from the container or it might look a little bit more elementary. Um, so anything you can do with color mixing will make it look more, uh, a little bit more intricate. So what we're gonna do is, instead of throwing bright yellow right on the canvas, and if Bob is watching, he already did this because he's always two steps ahead of me. Um, <laughs> you have your white, and now I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and touch it into the white. So I'm going to one dot, you always do dark into light because one little dot will change all that white. So I'm trying to make a very light yellow. I'm gonna keep this pretty soft. And I don't wanna completely cover up the white that I just did. So you're going to start adding paint beside the white and now that I have my light range, I'm going to keep, the, keep it going all the way along the horizon. So I have my light yellow. And if you're working with a canvas and not a flat canvas, you could wrap it around the edge. So paint the edges because when you don't have a frame, it looks really good when the edges are painted. Um, my holder is for an iPad, so I can't actually get in there yet, but I'm pulling in light yellow all the way along the horizon line but not directly under the sun. I'm gonna leave that white because I want the sun to look like it's really shining. So Laura, how are you holding your brush? Are you holding it so that the point is, is up towards the line or opposite? Um, I'm, I'm holding it on a slant like this. Okay. But to be honest, because of the, the way that I'm trying to face forward and paint, I'm holding it a little bit in an awkward way that I normally would. <laughs> Um, cause I'm trying not to get in the way so you can see it, but you would hold it on an angle so you can have a straight line. And the nice thing about paint, it's just like hair. If you mess up, you can cover it up and keep going. Or if your haircut is bad, you can grow your hair back again. <laughs> so don't stress out if it's not exactly what you were trying to do, you can cover it up with more paint later. So the yellow is along the horizon line. It's not covering the white right under the sun. And we don't want it to just look like a stripe. So if it looks too stripey, add a little bit more white into it to try and soften it up. And now I'm going to do, and so Pam, this is a good question that you asked about how to hold the, how to hold the paintbrush. Instead of having it now on an angle, I'm gonna have it straight on. So it's not, it's not on the side, but it's on the tip. And I, I want it to look streaky. I'm going to do some broken brush stroke lines and they're going to be long and then they're slowly going to get shorter as they get further away. Um, how's the light look for everybody? It looks okay. I feel like in the Facebook live, it's really hard to see, but those people should join us in Google Meet, so then I have to not worry about them. <laughs> okay, so now I have my broken yellow brush strokes, and I want it to look natural, so I'm gonna put a couple scattered ones a little bit further out to kind of bring them in. But the main amount of the yellow, it should almost be looking like a V. So if I go like this, my broken brush strokes are kind of all within that, because that's where the, the light will be the strongest. Did you do some over under the lighthouse as well, Laura? I, I just did two under the light range. <laughs> light range, yes. I love that we have Grace here who's from Southampton and can keep us on our toes about our, our history and our accuracy because um, I've been visiting it my entire life and just learned today the proper name. So I appreciate that. Um, so now I'm going to mix and I'm going to do less white. So I'm getting more into my yellow and I'm adding a bit more yellow so it becomes a stronger, brighter, happier yellow than the soft one. And once again, we're not gonna completely cover up that white or that yellow that we just did. We're gonna go a little bit further out. So here I'm adding broken yellow brush strokes on the outside only. I'm gonna put this on the far side of the light range. Add a little bit more bright yellow in here and sunsets come in all colors so we're making a warm sunset right now 
and there's different shades of yellow if you're not using completely primary pure yellow there's some nice warm you could recreate this with uh, a warmer almost a like gold the next step would be take to take this yellow and um, add a little bit of red to this the primary colors red yellow and blue does Scarlett know what happens when we put yellow and red together? What color that would make? She's coming to answer it for us. Yellow and red make? Oh, it's muted. Oh, orange. Orange, good job, Scarlett, thank you. So if we're looking at our color wheel, we are gonna go from yellow to orange to red. So next I am going to take a little dab of red, not too much, and I'm gonna dab that red into my yellow. And now it might turn into like a yellow orange or it might, depending on how much you throw in, it might be a really bright, strong orange. It depends on uh, your mood. If you're feeling really bold, make that orange nice and strong. So that orange, I'm gonna try not to completely cover up what I've already done. And angle this a little bit more, that's why. Okay. Just give me one, and then I'm gonna do broken brush strokes. I'm not covering up what I've already done, but I'm going to start stretching it over a little bit further. All the way to the edges. If you have a canvas like this, you can paint wrap right around. Do, do, do. I feel like we need music, but I didn't want to put any on because I didn't want to, to compete if somebody had music on in their own household. Do, 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 do. I feel like I uh, gotta do happy little waves. I know I'm not um, the real yeah. Bob Ross. Bob Ross? <laughs> yeah, but I do have his bobblehead. People might appreciate. <laughs> so he says lots of little Bob Ross quotes. And I, I'm stalling. How are people doing with getting this far? I don't want anyone to feel too rushed, but I also don't want you to be bored. <laughs> So you can tell my orange is not super vibrant. That means that there's a little bit of white still in it because from the beginning, I added pure white, then yellow, then red, and I keep adding into the same spot. And so the colors are mixing together to make it very gradual. If you wanted something dramatic, you just wouldn't mix it there. You could mix it up over on the side. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to, if you've done a little bit of this, we're gonna keep these colors, rinse our brush, and we're going to pull a little bit of these colors before we mix them any further. Usually whatever happens in the sky is echoed in the water, it reflects. So we need to have some of these colors up here in the sky. So right now we have pure white, and we're going to use our soft yellow so you might need to scoop more white again with a little bit of yellow. I actually think I need to add more white to my palette over here because I'm running out of space. And I'm going to get a soft yellow again. So I have my white with a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to go around the sun. We don't want it to look like the sun has a rainbow sitting on top of it. So this part is important. When we paint around the sun, try not to paint another circle like this, like a ball, but instead try and keep your lines horizontal, just like the horizon line. So that's tricky because it's tempting to paint a circle around the sun. So you're gonna do light yellow 
and you are going to pull across the horizon line this way and that way. And it's okay if that yellow touches into the sun because you can go back in with white and blend them together. And oftentimes the sun is not a perfect ball as the sun is setting it, the clouds and things help shape it. So I'm taking this light yellow with white and I'm going horizontally and I want the sun to kind of be beaming up into the upper sky as well. So I'm just going to skip up here and do a little bit of yellow up here as well. It's just random. I don't really know what I'm going to do with this yet. <laughs> I just don't want it to look solid in one location. And I'm going to do a little bit of yellow on the other side of the light range over here. So the yellow is kind of peeking around in different spots. How are we doing? Thumbs up with that. If it's not spreading for you very well, just dip your brush in some water and it will, if it's too bright, if you dilute it a little bit, it'll help you spread it thinner. Um, so just dip it in some water and you can stretch it across. Or if the color's too bright, you wanna add some water. Okay, so now we have our light yellow. We're going to get our light orange again. So that's our um, a little touch of red into that. I still have some left over from the water. And we're not gonna completely cover up what we did, but this is going to be more solid than the water. The water was streaky. We don't want the sky to be as streaky. So I'm just kind of sticking this on and I'm gonna show you something really quick with how I could fix this. So I'm putting this on chunky on purpose. And then you could use, if you have a larger brush, you can use it. And if you don't, you can just get this brush that you're working with wet and you're gonna just use clean water and smear it. So with clean water, I'm going to kind of just stretch this across and I'm gonna blend it over top of the yellow a little bit so they blend together more naturally. Ooh, and because mine's vertical, it's dripping. Ah, run away paint, no. So I'm just using water to blend the yellow and the orange together. Do, do, do. Jenny, do we have any trivia questions or things or should we pause and get people to show us where they're at with this? <laughs> Or do I just keep rushing going? I don't want to rush ahead because I can't see everybody else's screens. Um, there haven't been any questions coming through. so I, think I feel like people don't have time for questions because they're, no. they're just trying to keep up. <laughs> they're just trying to keep up with you, yes. So, um, I, I'd like to know from the group how many people here are kind of first time or would consider themselves beginner painters. Do we have any sure beginner painters? Oh, I can see Winston has his hand up. Okay, and Farron, um, she's our daughter's nanny, and they are doing the most ridiculous, creative uh, crafts. Ooh, that looks good. Um, they're doing these painting and crafts every single day. She actually painted her bum um, and did butt prints for cards for us, so she has some painting experience. Um, and Winston, I know, he's, he's always there with his kids painting, so I don't know. I don't know if I trust the first time painters in the room. Um, I did a paint night in person before in Sobble Beach and I think Beto was there. So Beto, how are you doing over there? <laughs> he's getting it, he's getting it set up right now. Oh, Lisa, that looks good. That looks yeah. Really good. Yeah. So your water, some people's water is looking streaky and, and that's good. 
and like sh bolder, strong colors that are broken. And then a, a little bit of a softer sky because the water is kind of smear, or the, the water on the paintbrush is really smearing it all together. Um, so the next thing that I'd like to do, if this is, if people are okay with where, it looks like people are, are keeping up really, really well. Um, we, we have choices now. So we can pull in a little bit more red and we can start brightening this up or we could pull in a little bit of purple. So it's like the sun is stronger on the horizon line and then it's a little bit of our purpley blue sky further away, further up. So if you wanna go bright, I would say, I want you to have choices here. You can add a little bit of red and from that red, you're gonna get a brighter sky going up this way. If you wanna try and keep it soft, then we are going to make a violet or a purple next. So some of you might even have purple paint. <laughs> Other people might wanna make it. So how do we make purple? So our primary colors are primary for two reasons. You can't mix them to get them. So you can't mix anything to get red, blue, or yellow. Um, but they make all the other colors. So when you mix the primary colors together, they make all the other colors. And Jenny, do we have a comment in the chat happening or anything with an answer? We do, yeah. Okay. I think it might be Grace again under Jeff's account saying red and blue. Okay. I also in the Facebook Live, we have somebody saying they're less than a beginner. So no pressure here, people. <laughs> um, so yes, red and blue. Red and blue make violet. So what we're gonna do, you have two options. If you wanna keep this nice and soft, you could create a light purple. And to make something lighter, we're gonna add white. So you could do red and blue. You're gonna have more red than blue. So if we're talking about ratios, um, Jenny and I, that's how we started Art of Math. We did a uh, paint by number together and people had to get the math equation right in order to know what color to paint. Um, and so they wanted to get their math answers right, otherwise they would be painting the wrong color. So if we're looking at ratios to make purple, we have more red than we have blue. So maybe three parts red, one part blue. I'm gonna to touch this blue into the red. And it looks pretty dark. I'm gonna show you what it looks like right on the canvas. And because it's so dark and I know this, I'm gonna put it further away from the sun. So if it's super dark, we don't want it too close to the bright area, so I'm gonna put it up here in the far corner. And if you feel like you want it to be even softer, so not just red and blue, you can add a little bit of that color into white and it will make it a really kind of milky purple. But I have not used white here. This is just red and blue. And if, if it looks scratchy, I'm not sure if you, I'm gonna do this on purpose if people can see, like if it looks scratchy like that, where it looks like a dry brush, that means you either need more paint or more water. So in this case, I'm going to use more water so I can pull it across. The nice thing if you're using acrylic is because it's water-based, um, water goes a long way to thin it and it doesn't stink and we're not all getting headaches in our basements because we're smelling the oil paint turpentine. Um, oh. So my challenge is with the canvas being vertical, my water's running a little bit, so I'm gonna thicken this up. And paint across the top of your canvas if it's not a flat board. Make sure the edges are painted. So while I have this color across the top, I'm gonna paint up here. Can I just say thank you right now for people giving us something to do with other people on a Saturday night when we've all been in lockdown and not seeing faces. This is really fun. <laughs> Although I do feel like I'm talking to myself. So thank you for making it so it's not, <laughs> Jenny and I were worried that we were gonna just be talking to each other tonight. And I know that, that been, there's that some the people that like care about us have shown up so that wouldn't happen. So thank you. <laughs> uh. So I can see like I, I have my purple coming down in here. 
a little bit more. And again, we want to eventually make it avoid look like it's stripes in the sky. And how you avoid that is you start pulling it down further. Um, I'm going to get to that, but my, my paint is very runny. I'm using my dollar store paint because I, I think that that's what we promoted the most. So I was trying to use what other people are using. But if you have thicker acrylic paint, it won't be as watery. But I have a paper towel on hand to catch these. As uh, Bob Ross would say, they're just happy little mistakes. So if, it, gonna, if, that, if it's meant to come down, that's what was meant to be. <laughs> I love for people that are just watching right now on Facebook Live randomly coming in at that part, but. <laughs> So now I feel that this looks a little bit chunky. I'm okay with it because I know that this is the process. It's not going to stay that way. But before I add any more colors or mixing, I'm going to take this color and pull it into the water. So I don't want to completely change the colors I'm working with to blend this until I've used this color. So I have my red and my blue mixed together. Um, and I haven't added white to it, but I think some people have to just soften it up. But I'm going to start in the bottom corner over here now, just like I did here, because I want them to match. So is it symmetry, where it's very similar on both sides? So above the horizon line, we have it dark down here in the water. Um, because the sun isn't shining over here, the brush strokes don't need to be as broken up looking. They need to be look more broken up as they come underneath the sun, where the sun is twinkling. So over here, it's horizontal brush strokes. It's a little bit wider. I drew some squiggly lines earlier that represented the rocks. So I'm not going to go past this. Like you can kind of see here, this is water. Um, but I'm going to leave a gap where the rocks are and where the dock or the boardwalk would be, the pier. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so now for people that are just joining us on Facebook Live, you're welcome to pop into the Google Meet, but I think at this point they're probably not painting. <laughs> um, I am now covering up what I did up here, but because, the wa because it's so thin, you can see through it. So you can see that it's brighter here than here. And this is where I'm gonna pause for a minute and make sure people get a chance to see. I'm going to take this purple and do broken brush strokes, but you don't wanna put it in front of the sun because the sun is so bright, but you're gonna have a couple horizontal lines that you pull in. And Pam, this is more the tip of the brush than the side because I'm trying to make the line thin. And it's broken again because there are twinkly spots, but to make those look twinkly, you need to have some dark contrast. How are we doing? I feel like it's very quiet and I'm not looking up. Ooh, I can see. Everybody, Those look good. On painting, I think. So I'm doing a little bit of the purple down in the bottom corner. Some people, so these are all warm colors. You could do this exact same technique and same sun, uh, sunset with, with cooler colors, like with blues, uh, beautiful blues and purples and cool colors. Make some of your lines thin, thinner and make some of them thicker so it looks um, more scattered. And make some short and some long.
Grace, you're missing the sunset in Southampton tonight, but what did it look like? Was it rainy? She's going to unmute. Uh, yes, it was rainy. Okay. Rainy. So this is the good thing about vir tonight it's been very rainy. virtual very paint rainy. nights. Um, the nice thing about virtual paint nights is they can happen rain or shine. <laughs> but... I, I, I'm going to hold myself to this, but I've never done it. And on my bucket list is to paint the sunset live um, because I'm always taking photos and then going back and painting them. Uh, part of that is just because of a crazy life. But my goal this summer is to sit and paint live in different locations. So I'm, I'm saying it out loud so I know that it will happen. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, we heard you. You're saying it was rainy. It was rainy. That makes us all happy because we're not there enjoying it. So we'd rather it be rainy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so to soften this up, I am going to add now a little bit more blue than red and I'm going to add white. So to make this, this purple blend down, I am going to, it's almost going to be like a gray but a, a little bit of purple that I already had. So purple, we're using red and blue to make purple. And then adding a little bit more blue into it. So that purple is more of like a bluish, a blue violet with a little bit of white. So it's kind of now turning almost gray. Um, if it's too gray, add a little bit more blue to it, but it's a very soft blue. You'll see better when I start painting it, maybe. Oh, whoa, I touched the black by accident. That was not on purpose. <laughs> I was like, what is that? We don't want black on it. Um, so what I have to, this is a happy accident, but not. Okay. The storm's coming in. I accidentally touched my black paint. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna have a little bit of blue with red, so like a very, very soft violet with some white. Um, I'm gonna remake that color because black got into it somehow. Um, gotta get my white here. So one thing I always say is that black doesn't naturally exist in nature, so in landscapes, black tends to make things look really flat. So it's better to mix all the primary colors together and get a really dark, rich color. And if you can avoid using black to do that, it will make it have more depth and dimension to it. Um, whereas if you have black, oftentimes it's great, but it's not natural and it will make it look flat. Um, so here I have a lighter purple, but it, it's like a, a blue violet. And I'm, I'm putting it in like, as Bob Ross would say, a happy little cloud. So we have our nice, clean, smooth sky. And I'm gonna just put this little cloud in. And I'm gonna put one over here as well on this side to just kind of add a little bit of depth and it's gonna tuck behind the lighthouse, or the light range. Oh, my life. <laughs> For the science people, um, Aaron, if you're still there, or Sandra, what are the big fluffy clouds called? The big... Cumulus, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and Alyssa is a science person too. Oh yes, okay. Yeah. Science in the house. Aaron or Alyssa. Cumulonimbus. And then Erin wasn't sure, so she, she took a while to, to unmute. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, they're not like the white, perfectly fluffy clouds because the sunset is shining on them, but they are, I'm kind of just trying to describe them that way. So they look like cotton candy, a little bit fluffy. They're not the stratus line. They're more a little bit fluffy. 
And I'm gonna take that color and you'll get to know this. Everything I do in the sky, I pull it down into the water somewhere. And how are we doing for time? Pretty. Uh, I've lost track of time. It's 7.54 and so we're doing good, I, I think. I feel like everyone's gonna wanna visit Southampton after this. They do have really beautiful sunsets there. Bob and Debbie, how are you doing over there? I can see some people couldn't get into the Google Meet, but they are following on Facebook Live. So you'll see, I just kind of used water and used that purple and then pulled it across. And while you're working on that, I'm going to show you a painting with like, for people that want to go darker, you can. Um, but I also want to be respectful of our, of our time because as Shrek would say, paintings like layers and we can keep going and going and it's really hard to know when to stop. Um, so this one, the sky is darker and more blues have been brought in, but you can see kind of the same idea. So the white on the horizon line, yellow and then orange and red and slowly getting darker the further away it is so for us we are going light and gradually getting darker if you want to keep and we will do this if we have time but you could pull in a darker blue and this was the, almost the same thing but without the whites so we had yellow we went from white light yellow orange red and then we started pulling in the light purple and then a darker blue so if we can get to it, the next step will be to pull in some darker blue. But depending on where you might put this, maybe you don't want it to be dark, you just want it to be very calm. Um, what I'd like to do is look a little bit more at the, the light range next to make sure we kind of get into that and then talk about some of the math connections. And then at the end, if we can pull in some more blues, we will. Um, so before we leave the sky, so we don't get too dark, um, I'm gonna add the blue, one blue touch along the top of the cloud because we know the bottom of the cloud, the sun is hitting it. So the top of the cloud, the sun is not seeing as much. So it'll be a little bit darker above the cloud, like this. And it's just like a darker shade of violet on top. This isn't really needed, but it, it will help add depth into your cloud if you want it. And the fun thing about clouds is that you, they have different roles. Like you can paint in different directions, whereas the water, we're trying to stay horizontal. The cloud, if you wanna do kind of a little bit of circles. In art, we call it scumbling, like scribbling. You can do some circular uh, motions with the cloud. And all I'm doing is adding a little bit of a darker blue on top. And because I did that there, I'm gonna add a little bit of a darker blue on the bottom. But I'm not going to let myself get carried away because I'm gonna move into the light range. Because <laughs> I could do this all night and I don't know if everybody would stay online to do that with me. <laughs> so I'm gonna add the darker blue in the corner, but I'm not gonna do like too, too much. You could add one dark blue stripe there. I, add, I pulled it in a little bit further over towards the center to try and just make a connection. Jenny, how are you feeling? Do you think we should show them what this could look like on Desmos while people are just touching this up before we move to the light range? Or should I just keep going ahead? Okay. People are in the group unless we're ready for a bit of a break um, from the group. If you wanna, I think we should. We could do a light range break where everybody, everybody, st sorry. Oh. Uh, I think your brother just joined. 
Yeah, he might, he, it must be hot there because he has a shirt off in our group chat. <laughs> Should, okay, so uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, I appreciate all of my followers. Um, so we're gonna, I think we are gonna take a break right now and we're going to stretch like a light range. So everybody just stand up and give yourself a stretch. And if you need to use a, the facilities or get a refill on your coffee mugs, I think we will come back at 8.05. Um, and we will just speak at and talk at you for five minutes, but we won't paint. Did, and I think when people come back, I'd love to see as you come back what your art is looking like. So we're all taking a five minute break from our Southampton light range and the Google Meet for, I can see there's more people in the live. Feel free to join us in the Google Meet. I can't see who you are, but I feel very techy having like the laptop and the iPhone and the iPad. Next, Jenny, it'll be that we get really good lights that people actually, I have four lamps, yeah. I have four lamps set up and I'm in my basement, but my next investment will be one of those lights where you don't get the shadows. Um, the, the, same way. the lighting looks good to me. Yeah. I, I, I can see you okay. My house, like outside of this room is dark right now because I took every light that we own and put it in one spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, Laura, I'm here now. Hi, I'm welcome. Google, Google to uh, work, thanks to Bobby. We're glad that it's working. We are, um, I, can, I love that you guys are painting along, so thank you for joining us. We're just taking a, a five minute break, so. Because we do a lot of, uh, the reason I'm asking is we do like water down, paint up type techniques, talking. Like if you want the, the shading to be done, I don't know if you can see that on here. Yeah, that looks. Paint up, water down is what we talk about a lot with folk art on wood. So it gives that shading effect that we are talking Ooh. about. Ooh. Yes, yeah, so you're using water and um, you're creating a gradient where you put more paint on the top and then you use water to pull it down. So it's like gradually, and in art we like, we talk about value, so different lights and darks. So that's really neat, because you, Pam, you're working with all one color then, for the most part. Like you put the color on the top and, and bleed it down. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's really funny, because when we do landscape paintings, if I was trying to get people to do a wash, so for example, when we look at the, when we look at a sky, and we're, we're, if we weren't doing a sunset, we would do it that way. Um, so it could be, like, if it was pure blue, you could do light blue into dark, or you could put the dark across the top and just add water and bleed it down. Jenny and I talked about doing another paint night using watercolors because watercolors work that way. So watercolors, you're using the white of the paper to show through it and you're not really even using white paint, but that's where you would put the pigment on and then you would add water and you would go from dark and gradually make it lighter. So we should do a watercolor um, night and you would, it would be that exact technique, dark to light. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do a lot of folk art paintings. I love it. I want to see more. <laughs> come, I, over for, come over for Halloween then. Okay, we will. <laughs> hi. Laura, it's Leslie Robertson. I just want to oh, say hi. Hi. I got a crew painting with you today. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. <laughs> and we're trying super hard to keep up, but we are beyond beginners. You're I mean, doing we are free beginners. You're doing an awesome job. Well, we're so glad you're here. There's a lot of Thames Valley here actually. Like Aaron so and Jenny and Alyssa and and Pam. So yeah, thank you guys so much. And Evan say hi, because they're from Mountsfield. Oh. Oh, hi. Hi, Carter. And Evan. Oh my God. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, I'm turning my camera back off, but I just wanted to say hi and thank you so much. It's Th so fun. Thank you so much. Can you guys, we hope that you'll take pictures and we get to see uh, the end result. And Jenny and I have some prizes. I feel like we should, uh, we should give some prizes for people's time tonight. Maybe we should do that as we're waiting for the next minute. For time, not for results. Okay. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. 
We should do a kid prize. One of our, um, and I feel like we, they're, they're close enough in proximity that we could actually get them one of the, we have an Art of Math Ed coloring book and we have hard copies or digital copies. So depending on how far away people are, what, what question could we ask one of the, the kids about to get themselves an Art of Math coloring book? I will see if you can tell us a math connection that you can make to the art that we've done. Because we've spent a lot of time talking about the art side of things and a little bit of time talking about some of the math. But what are is something that maybe we've mentioned already or something that you could see in the painting that would be a connection to math? A math word or a math connection. Any I mean, ideas? Numeration would be a good question. Ooh, okay. Good, so I'll write Pam's name down. <laughs> Pam just won a coloring book. Um, <laughs> the kids I work with are blind. Yeah. Aww. Well, Pam, we could send you a, a digital copy and then that way you could enlarge it. And, and maybe we could help. I don't know. I, th I thought may not. Work. We but did. I actually. I that before. Yeah. We did do something like that. I think I sent it to you, Laura, because some of the kids I work with are dual vision. So I needed the lines really, really, really bold. But what I can use is a PF machine, which um, if I connect the lines, do them in like a, a Sharpie, I put it through a machine and it bubbles it up for the kids so they can feel the shape of the picture. Oh, You're amazing. Yeah. I went to Pam's school once and, and got to read my children's book. And before I came, because she had invited me, um, we went through each page and she found objects to represent each thing that I was saying so the students could feel it um, as, as we were going through the story. And it was just, it was a moving experience for me because it brings reading a book to a, a whole different level and different experience. So we love you, Pam. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. In, in the chat, correct. In the chat, Carter has also said that uh, he sees the different shapes that we use to create things. So, Carter, what grade are you in? Two. Oh, grade grade two. two. So, okay. Carter, what shape do you see? Two. Can you remember one shape that you see here? Circle. Good job. I wonder if somebody in one of the older grades can tell us what is a three-dimensional circle called? Like a ball, what is that shape? I think Desmond has his hand up. A three-dimensional circle. A sphere? A sphere! All right, so I think Carter and Des and Scarlett should both uh, be winners. And um, absolutely, you're right. So we have a 2D flat shape. And oftentimes in art, we're trying to make something flat look 3D. So in this case, it doesn't really, it doesn't need to. Uh, because it doesn't need to look like a ball coming off the page. We want it to look like it's flat in the distance. But yes, a 3D circle is called a sphere. Should we do um, a harder math question? <laughs> One more. Um, so we have our X and our Y. What is it called when you put a point? Oh, no. I, I don't want to answer it the way I asked the question. <laughs> you go, Jen. I'm trying to I was trying to think of, remember the joke I made about your horizon line not being crooked, and if your horizon line is crooked, it's going to create a S word? Or maybe we can get someone to describe, how would they describe the difference between some of the lines that we've used in, um, in the painting tonight? So if you were to describe the difference maybe between the horizon line or some of these lines that we've used to create the range length. And people in the live were asking, how do you describe these lines? The difference between them for the math side of things. So it was stressful. When I was team teaching with Jenny, we, I had to learn the equation of a line. <laughs> oh, okay, we have somebody with their hand up. Go ahead. Um, one's more slanted than the other. One is more slanted. Yeah. And if we put that on a graph, we could find the slope of how slanted that is versus straight up and down vertical. If it's slanted, it has a slope. So that's where we pull in, depending on what grade we're in. 
uh, our grade eight and nines and tens might find out the slope of that. So we might also talk about the, how slanted it is or how steep it is. And then as we go further in math, we can be very specific about how steep it is using the, the slope as Laura said. So the progression of being more specific with our descriptions as we move, as we move forward. All right. Thanks for making um, us be, and the other thing too, if this was on a graph and we were teaching this, we could tell people exactly the coordinates of where to put their, where to put things, which is the whole point of it. The whole point of having a graph and talking about where things go is so you can be accurate. Whereas when we started, I said, okay, this is halfway through the canvas. We don't want it to be smack in the center. We want it to be asymmetrical off to the side. But if we had a graph, we could say how far over we wanted it or how far over we wanted the sun in the, in the other direction, in the negative direction. So definitely the, the graphing helps us place things accurately. But for this, we want to have fun and we want people to feel like it can be wherever they want for the most part. And the fun thing after that is we, we slap a graph on at the end and then we compare how different everyone's is, which is great because we want everyone's to look unique and special to them. So I think we're good to start, um, as people are coming back now, we're going to start getting into painting the actual light range. And knowing down here, we have a boardwalk and some rocks. So because the sun is behind it, this is going to look more like a silhouette. So it is going to be darker. Um, and so I'm going to start actually light and I'm going to get slowly make it darker. So I have my, um, my blue. So if you have a dark blue or a dark purple, you wanna make the darkest color that you can with the paints that you have without putting black in. So I'm gonna give a couple ways that we can do this. So if you have blue, you can add red into it to slowly make that darker. And it might be a dark purple. Some of you might have other colors with you. You might have a brown or a green. Anything you can do by mixing all three primary colors together, you're gonna to make it dark. And no one's watching us color mix because we're all at home. So you can cheat and put a little bit of black into it. But normally we would try and make it dark without using black. So it is tricky to do. And if you have any white, it's gonna look kind of gray. So you don't wanna have white mixed into it. So you wanna get it as dark as you can, mixing all three primary colors together. And if you have a color, some people brought extra colors with them, like a dark purple or a brown. I would choose that over black, but I'm going to go with black because that's what we told everybody that came here tonight. So I'm gonna stick with my, my dark color. I haven't added black in yet. And what I'm gonna do is just go along the edges of the lighthouse so you can see. There's no black in that. But it's okay, I feel like it's like a dark blue violet and it will actually capture, surfaces will capture the reflection into them. I will be adding black later. And right now I'm just trying to get clean, clean lines. And one way to make your lines nice and smooth is to dip your brush a little bit into the water. So if it feels too chunky, it's probably not wet enough. And if it's wet, you'll get a smoother line. This is kind of an awkward angle for me, so I might have to turn this for a second, or maybe I'll try this way. So you can really see the trapezoid starting to take place. And we talked about how a trapezoid, Jenny, do you wanna give us the definition again of a trapezoid? So the, the definition, and actually I'd be interested to hear from the math folks in the room tonight too. Um, some sites will say that it, it has exactly one pair of parallel lines and some will say at least one. So by that definition, something like a rectangle could also be considered a trapezoid. Um, but usually when we talk about a trapezoid, it has one set of parallel lines and then the others are not. Um, and, and parallel just means that they're the same. Yes. And so we have the same steepness or the same slope. Jenny, so, could you call it a quadrilateral as well? Yes, it is a type of Could you call it a quadra quadrilateral? I'm just repeating because people in the Facebook Live can't hear, but I thought that was a good question. And the answer yeah, is... my second bottle of yeah. <laughs> yes, it is a type of quadrilateral. That's the, the broader term for all four-sided shapes. So a trapezoid is a type of quadrilateral. Um, but Alyssa, I would be interested to hear 
hear from you because, yeah, I think some definitions will say at least one set and some say exactly one set of parallel lines. So there is sometimes a bit I actually of, have no idea. Yeah. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I love your honesty too. So yeah, I love that honesty. It's just. I've never taught trapezoids and stuff like that. So I look it up, I Google it. Yes, and then I think sometimes when you Google it, people have, um, there are different definitions out there. There's some, there is a little bit of dispute about um, if it, if a rectangle is also considered a trapezoid. So um, I think the traditional kind is the one we've done here with just the one set of parallel lines and then the other are usually slanted towards the top like that, but you could have a right trapezoid where one line is vertical and the other is slanted. So, and just to add to the, right now we're doing one point perspective. We're not trying to make something look like it's on a corner, which we could do two point perspective later. Um, so your lines should be parallel to the horizon line and that will make them look so it's not falling over. So the base and the top of your, your light range are parallel to the horizon line. Um, so they're not crooked. And I'm gonna add in this little balcony up here. And I know in real life, it's not a balcony. Um, but just to try and describe it here at Giggle, because some everybody else knows it's not. And so then, I meant, as you were doing that, Laura, I got so excited talking about trapezoids. I missed. Are we just coloring? Are we just painting that all in with that same dark purple? Yes. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna be slowly layering this, just like we did the sky and the water to get it darker. Um, but I was trying to show how we're we're avoiding using pure black right away. Um, and so what I've done is the trapezoid and a rectangle. And then I'm going to connect to the edge of that rectangle with a, a slanted line right here. And this would be, this is a pretty large brush that I'm using for how small the area is. If you have a smaller brush, you'll be able to get a little bit more detail. I'm gonna see if I have one on me. Sometimes I get into paintings and it happens just so quickly that I just do it all with one brush. Um, but you do get more techniques, the one you can get smaller brushes in there. So I have this on an angle. I'm actually gonna fill it in, but I, I'm drawing it out the outline so you can kind of see the shapes that I'm using to create it. And then up here, it just looks like a little triangle on top, it's like a little cap. And then the little stick coming out the top and filling in that little gap there is another small rectangle. So some people in the beginning, we talked about just drawing a trapezoid, a square and a triangle. And I think that that could be a straightforward way. So we talked about just stacking the three shapes on top of each other. And now I'm gonna use this dark color and I'm just gonna outline where the rocks are and that's just squiggly lines because the rocks are not rectangular or perfectly made, they're very natural. They're gonna come out in front of the, the break wall or the pier a little bit. And then the pier itself is just a straight line this way. And again, we're slowly filling this in to become a silhouette. Some people might not know this, but Jenny and I initially planned this um, for a number of different reasons. One, because we love this location. Um, for Jenny and I, uh, we finished writing a book called Interdisciplinary Collaboration. And we talked about when you blend subjects together, how students learn better. Um, and so we just kind of launched that book, but we haven't really officially announced it. So we thought this would be a fun place to do it. <laughs> so we wrote this book um, and we're hoping to share it further. And then for me, sentimentally, it was my best friend. She passed away and it's her birthday tonight. So her name's Lauren Beausoleil and she loves Southampton. And I told her family that I'd be doing a painting for her today because normally I would be with her. Um, and her last name is Beausoleil, it's beautiful sun. So I thought tonight I'll do a painting of a beautiful sun in honor of her and I'm gonna give this to her family. Um, so yeah, there was a, a number of different reasons. So I appreciate uh, not being alone today and getting to do this with all of you. And I'm going to change the subject because I don't want to 
uh, get too emotional about it, but I, <laughs> there's lots of things that make today special for us. Okay, Jenny, start talking and fill in some quiet gaps now so I don't feel... <laughs> I don't know how to follow that up, but yes, thank you to everybody for joining us, and hopefully um, everybody's kind of... Well, I know how you could follow it. Your family connection. Your family lives in Southampton. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, that is my, fam my parents and my sister both live in Southampton, so I get to go visit that beautiful area, and every time I go there, my family tries to convince me to move there with the beautiful beat sunsets and... So I want to move there with you. About the winters. I remind them of the winters and how much snow you get up there. Um, so, but yes, it does have a very special place in our in our hearts and it's um, lots of happy memories there. Yes. And Jenny's family, you're big fans of cross-country skiing, so you would be fine in the winter. Um, and my, my, my dad lives there and we were uh, been coming there our whole lives for um, every holiday and summer, so... We, it's our a home away from home for sure. Um, you do talked about uh, collaborating and how it encourages kids to to learn more. What about spiraling, to combining all the subjects and continuing to to learn them all throughout the year? Do you find that's beneficial as well? That's a good question. Thanks, Pam. And we swear we didn't plant Pam in here tonight. <laughs> Um, but absolutely, when you revisit concepts and you learn them in different ways, they become more memorable. So we've kind of tracked retention rates of memory. When you have to revisit content, you're more likely to recognize it. And I think it also brings in those transferable skills. Like when you see things in different contexts, you're more likely to be able to use them in the future. There's more meaning behind them. Um, and and they become more memorable. So I would remember the artwork I did and all the math connections in it, but if you ask me a math equation on its own, it might not be as memorable in that case. But Jenny, do you wanna talk about spiraling? And before you do, I'm just gonna give one more tip so people can follow along with the art. Um, I'm gonna start adding in some black, but when I add in black, I'm gonna use it from the far side. So I'm not gonna put it along the edge closest to the sun. I'm gonna start adding black on the far side over here. And, and one more question, Laura. Sorry, I don't have black. I used it for another project. Would midnight blue be okay? That's perfect. So anything darker, it's actually ideal not to use black. Um, any layers of colors that people have at home to make it darker, like a dark, like a burnt umber, a dark brown, dark green. Um, you can, the more colors you mix together, they will get darker and darker with browns, and then slowly turn into uh, like a rich black. Um, I'm going to use pure black and mix it in to the reds and the blues and I'm going to start on this side and I'm just going to start making it dark. The, the risk of using pure black is that you start to make it look gray and so that's why it's actually better to use other colors because it doesn't exist in nature um, but I'm going to use that for tonight because I think it will help with our silhouettes. And Jenny back over to you with the benefits of spiraling. <laughs> you so can there tell is definitely yeah. lots of research to um, suggest that spiraling helps with things like Laura mentioned with retention and also providing students multiple opportunities to come back to the same concepts. Um, when we were teaching art of math, we I think everybody that you talk to about spiraling will always say they don't they don't do it the right way or they're not sure that they're doing it the way it's supposed to be done. But we tried um, to just bring whatever art project we were working on to allow students to make connections to learning from previous units of study or previous projects that we had. Um, and as Laura mentioned, there was a lot of times that students would, would connect the math by, oh, that was that project we worked on. And so they were able to kind of recall some information because of they had made that connection to the, the visual representation of the project that they were working on. Um, so yes, spiraling is definitely, it's spiraling and cross-curricular connections are definitely a passion of ours. And, and we know that a lot of the educators that are joining us here tonight would also feel the same. Um, so I don't know if anybody else here wants to chime in and, and give their experiences with spiraling or I know that there are some people. I think uh, oh. just, just to, <laughs> I'll respond. If somebody puts something in the chat, I don't want to put them on the spot, but I do think um, the other thing that we're not, to, like this isn't traditional in an art class. Like we like people, everyone to get to create their own thing. Um, and so personalized learning where you come up with something and, and students get to make up their own, they're more likely to connect to it if it's, um, something that they want to do and so in this case in a paint night 
Um, traditionally, we would kind of come up with a topic and there would be all different strategies and approaches and it could look all different. Um, but for paint nights, we're kind of following along step by step. But in the future, uh, that's not normally actually how we would deliver an art lesson because we would want everybody's to look different on purpose. Um, and then people teach each other because they're, they end up creating different things and then explaining their work to each other as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's examples of that in our book. <laughs> um, okay, so I put black on one side here and now I'm gonna be pulling some black down in here and eventually a little bit more um, light again because I want the rocks to have lights and darks. So I'm gonna put some um, lines here for the rocks that are kind of all over the place and jagged and squiggly. And they wanna have lights and darks on them and further away from the sun, it's gonna be darker and it's gonna get lighter as it comes towards the sun. Um, so you can see there, it's starting to look more like a silhouette but it's not completely pure black. Like it, I'm not sure if you can see it in my lighting the same way, but it's a little bit lighter purple over here, gradually turning into black. And now I'm intentionally gonna pull in some light um, and I'm just gonna kind of dry brush it onto the edge this way. So it's like the sun is beaming onto this a little bit, just to give it a little bit of depth. And I'm gonna dust the light on top of the rocks. What light is this? Like just <laughs> any lighter color? <laughs> any lighter color, that's a great question. So I, I just am using the colors that are already on my palette. So anything lighter than what you have here. So in this case, it could be your like your medium purple or your like a medium color blue. Oh, sorry, I just realized you can't see my actual palette. So here's like my dark. That is black and blue and red all mixed together. So anything lighter than that. So this one is a little bit lighter. And I actually don't love how streaky it looks. So I'm gonna go over it and then pull, just drag it towards the left. Or sorry, towards the right. <laughs> I flipped here. Your painting is different um, in the live and in, in the meet. In the meet it's on the right and in the live it's on the left. So I know, I feel that. like I'm a dance instructor. <laughs> Farron would get this. Like you say things opposite. I don't know if it's flipped or not, but. I accidentally got a line there that's gonna really bug me right here. It like went on top of my sky and that's not supposed to be there. So I'm gonna use a clean brush with water and see if I can wash it off and then use paper towel to dab it. If not, my lighthouse is gonna get a little bit fatter if I have to hide this line right there. So water kind of fixes your mistake. I was getting too wild with my paintbrush and water. I, painted the sky by accident. How are we doing right now? Um, because you can see here in the dark, like you could be taking some of this and pulling it down into the water, but I also don't wanna rush ahead as people are working on this. Um, so the goal is with your light range to have it almost black on this side, a little bit lighter on the left, but from a distance, it'll just look all flat black but as you look closer, it's a little bit lighter over here. And if you didn't do that, you can easily add it on top. And then with your rocks, it's just squiggly lines with your dark blue and your blacks. And then you could go in with a gray or, or anything a little bit lighter that's mixed with white even. And you could just kind of dust along the top of the rocks so that the top of the rocks have like the lights hitting them. I don't know if I have to hold this up a little bit closer. Okay, there's dedicated people in this Facebook Live and I'm sorry that we can't talk to you. Jenny, are you, are you seeing anything that they're throwing in the chat? Um, no, there hasn't been anything so far in the okay. chat. Okay. I've been trying to, um, but in the, the meet, um, the, the username is Hillary Bruce, but I think that might be Leslie. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I think that was Leslie. Um, said that she spent many summers at a cottage in Port Elgin and has been to the oh. beach. It's lots of people with connections to the... I feel area. like we should exchange contacts if you're up that way. I'm heading there on Wednesday and not back till September is the goal. <laughs> oh, nice. Yes. <laughs> Jerry's prize is open. 
Perfect. <laughs> we'll be eating those on the beach, watching the sunset for real, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that was in the comment, too, about Southampton and fries on the beach. <laughs> they are amazing. Yeah. You have to, and look out for seagulls, but that's okay. It's all part of yeah. the beach experience. Yeah. Okay, so my next thing, um, because I'm, I want to now kind of create a little bit more depth in the sky, so I have my light sun, my, my kind of purpley clouds, and they've gotten into a little bit dark blue. I'm just gonna add some darker tones along the top of the cloud, very lightly, so not with a lot of, um, not with a lot of paint, almost like a dry brush. You're just scraping it on top of it. So it's like you dip your brush in this dark color over here, almost black, and then you wipe it off on the paper towels so it's not too heavy. So it's a dry brush and you're just gonna kind of scrape it over here on top because you don't want to cover up what you did. You're just kind of dry, dry brushing in a little bit of texture of the cloud. I can hear someone's dry brush and that's good because that's the sound effect, of, that's the sound effect of what I'm trying to create. <laughs> I thought that was you. No. Yeah. But, Sorry, I think it's me. I forgot to turn my sound. That's, oh, okay. that's okay. It's like the sound effect of dry brush. Mm -hmm. It's good. <laughs> I almost just dipped my brush in my coffee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now I'm going to take this dark color and I'm just going to touch in a couple stripes down here into the corner. Because I think we do have time to get to the next level here. And you will be judging yourself, but don't, because anybody that walks by and sees this, they don't get to see all the process behind it. And no sunset looks the same. So it's hard when, that's why we don't traditionally teach art this way, because you, it's, you're, it's like you have a direct comparison right in front of you. And it's better to just say, do a gradient light to dark, and we all surprise each other which I think that's, that's what we'll do in the future now that people know uh, <laughs> kind of the process of starting with the sun and gradually pulling in the dark. I'll show you another example while you're playing around. Um, this one, this one was inspired, it was an orange sunset and it was the, the sun dipping down, so just pure white, slowly adding in some yellow and oranges, but I really wanted to focus on the orange and um, this one was pretty heavy. It was with the 215 indigenous um, uh, children's bodies that were found. So I don't want to get into detail because I know we have a lot of different folks in our group. Uh, but this was kind of my response. I didn't really know and that's where this came from. Um, but you can see the, the light gradually getting darker and then it's streakier under the sun and it gets smoother further away. And that's kind of what we we're, we're doing. We're keeping it streaky here and then it's going to get smoother further away. Um, at this point, I wanna make sure, we haven't really asked if there's questions. Some people have just asked them naturally, but if there are questions about, like you want tips on your work, normally we would be walking around and be able to see and give tips as we go. <laughs> So, um, Pam, I can see part of it. Can you pull it back a little bit? Ooh, do you want oh, to... Good. That looks so good. Ooh, I like your rocks. I'm not happy with it. I think I'm, I'm so much of a folk art painter. I don't know if I like the rocks or not. Do you want to... Um, so, I, I think some people have me pinned right now where I'm bigger. Uh, can, we, can people see Pam's screen? I think that that... So the thing I like about the rocks is that traditionally, sometimes when people paint, they paint everything the same style, so there's no texture to it. And to me, those rocks really have a different texture than the sky. And sometimes people's water and sky look exactly the same. And if it's a perfectly still day, that makes sense. But I feel like you've captured the twinkle in the water. Yeah, good job, Pam. Thanks for being brave and sharing. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else want to share? I'll share mine to oh, kind of ooh. keep the flow going. 
Oh, oh Alyssa's just, sharing. I love I it. Just Alyssa, yours looks super dramatic. I love the contrast between the bright mm -hmm. and the, the, it's like the, the light range is glowing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very striking. I like yeah. the, it looks like there's wave, like the waves look more um, rough. Like it looks like the waves are, are Yes, strong. and we can show how to do that. If people want to, um, you would dip your brush in white paint and then you wipe it off on your paper towel so it's like a dry brush and you just kind of splash it up. So I'll do that actually right now really quick. Um, so it's like a white or a light yellow and I'm just going to kind of splash it up over the rocks like this. Oh. And then I can put a couple lines underneath so it looks like the water kind of maybe hit the rocks a little bit. And you don't want to have the paint too thick. You want it to feel like a dry brush so you can see through the paint. So you can see the rock through it, like the water splashing up over it. Another example, like really close up of this one, that's what I did right here. So the water splashing, it was just dry white. Um, and right here. So Alyssa, thanks for inspiring that. Um, and if anyone has seen Southampton, sometimes the water splashes right over it. And so it's kind of cool. To, to be able to capture a different um, movement in the water. Mm -hmm. Do we have another sharer? Oh, here's mine. Ooh, that looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Do you have any questions? Okay. Yeah, I feel like that that's how I've seen the sunset look sometimes where it's really bright and then further away, it, it, it looks like professional photographers are taking these pictures. And if you were to paint, paint them, that's what the sky really looks like. It's bright on the bottom and then darker further away. Yep. Yes, good, good work. Well. Good work, Grace. Thank you. This is hard. This is mine. Ooh. Are you painting oh, together? So good. Like yeah. on the same one? <laughs> Let's see yours. Oh, hold on, wait, I can't see it. Oh, Gotta it slide it over. Good. That looks really good. Aww. Yeah, the group is doing great. I know. And I, I think that you you guys are actually going to be visiting Southampton as well, probably, up in the Port Elgin area. Is that right? Yeah. 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 So you'll have to bring your artworks with you and look at the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have, uh, Kate, how are you doing over there? It looks so bright over where you are. Like, is it, it's not nighttime? <laughs> Ooh, that looks good. You've done a good job capturing the reflection of the pink down into the water. I kind of messed up my sun. No, that look, let me see. I fixed the color too much in here, but I'm trying to cover it up. Okay, so I've done that before, and I can tell you quick tips. If you feel like it's too solid right here of the white, yeah. you just do a couple lines of the color into it, and it will cover that up. Okay. I think it looks good. And I also love when the sun is not a perfect circle. So sometimes, especially when we're talking in kindergarten, grade one, grade two, we think of the sun as a ball. And when I start with younger grades, I'll say we, that's the last thing we want to do. Because um, just because we know the sun is in, in the sky, it's rare on a bright sunny day. It just feels bright out. It doesn't feel like there's a perfect ball up in the sky. So it's good for people that have taken the white and kind of smeared it around. It doesn't have to stay in a ball. Yes, that looks good. Ooh, good job. Nice. Oh, hi, Britt. Is that Avery? Yeah, oh, I Avery love it. it Aw, that looks so good, Avery. I feel like you've been to the, the real light range because it looks like you have the, uh, it almost looks like a door on it. That's really good. It is. It is? Good job. Yay! I can't wait to see some of these. Jenny, do you want to call out some more people to share? I think most people um, have shared. I'm just trying to see if anybody else is in the group. Aww. Look amazing. It's amazing. Everybody's looks amazing. Let's see Sandra's. No pressure. Oh, I thought we saw Sandra's. Oh, did we? At, at the beginning? Maybe, but I didn't. I had you pinned, so I might have missed. Sandra, do you want to share yours? Or Ryan? I don't know 
right. For people yeah. in the Facebook Live, we are just seeing how everybody's doing right now and sharing their screens. So we would love for people to join Art of Math Ed, our Facebook group, and put their pictures and post what you've done um, in our Facebook group so we can all celebrate your work. If you don't feel comfortable doing that with your name attached to it, you can send it to us privately and we will post it for you. <laughs> Um, but we would love to be able to see and for you to share what you're doing with us. And we're taking requests. If we want to do another paint night, we're happy to host one. We can do different locations. Um, did we did we see Grace's? Did Grace yes, have Grace shared okay. hers. Okay. I think uh, you I did. Kendra, do you have yours? Okay. Yeah, I did. There's mine. Yes, great. Right. Right. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Beto. Ooh, those look good. The bit Ooh, that looks really good. The side doesn't. It's sideways. There it is. Oh. Yeah. But you have nice gradual blending, so nice gradient. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good job. So good too. <laughs> Um, and Jenny, so we have, do, do we want to share your screen? Um, actually, before we do, should we take a group photo or should we wait a little bit longer for people to keep painting first? Um, it would be awesome anybody who is willing to share to take a screenshot of everybody with their paintings. So we would have to put it, could you throw it in gallery mode and like we can, anyone that wants to hold their painting up and if you don't want your face in it, you can hold your artwork in front of your face. <laughs> And if you don't want to be in the picture, you do not need to have your camera on. So just turn your camera off and then you won't show up in the picture. Okay. With permission, we would love to be able to share and uh, but we don't want anyone uncomfortable. Okay, are you gonna Ooh. hold yours up too? I have mine right here. So I think, Pam, are you gonna hold yours up? Oh, sorry, sorry. You're on the camera. Okay, ready? I'm gonna do okay I, hold on. More people are wanting to turn theirs on. Do you have it, Jenny, in grid view? Yes. Okay. Okay, ready? Yep. One, two, three. There we go. Aw. Yay, good job. Miss. Oh, can we see? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, nice. That is so good. Are you happy with it? Yeah. I love it. I, I love how the sun goes from the white into the yellow into the blue. So you are definitely listening. We've, we've got that uh, gradual transition. Looks good. Oh my God. And Scarlett's coming to show, share hers. Well, Mom, let's hear yours. Down, down, Scarlett, down. Three. Ooh, I love it. Very nice. Good job, Scarlett. Ooh. Oh, good as well. I, yes, nice. very, very nice. Good job. Creativity oh, runs in that family. <laughs> yeah. I think as much as we've been doing the same thing, everybody's does look slightly different. It's neat to see. It's a it's a fun surprise, like a gift reveal to see all the different ones. And, and it's yeah. good, like you can do different styles. We're not trying to uh, create photographs here. Oh, I can see Lisa saying her battery died. I think we lost a couple people, but that's okay. We're, we're rounding up into the end. Um, do we wanna do any prizes for um, anything else, like as thank yous? Uh, we, well, we have the picture of everybody who shared. So we were thinking that we would, those people who kind of participated in the year will put uh, names into a draw for a free copy of our book um, and love to get your your feedback on what you think about that um, and I wrote down the names of all of the people who answered questions earlier and if it was one of our younger participants we have some age-appropriate prizes <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more interesting reading than maybe the the other one absolutely and Yes, and on our website, artofmatha.ca, we, and I feel like a lot of the people in this room already know this, so we don't even need to say it, but there's kindergarten to grade 12 activities, and we have little ones at home, so we're always testing them on our own kids. They're like our little 
protege guinea pigs that we <laughs> are doing all these little activities with. Yeah. I don't know. Right. I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm tempted to leave this. Pardon? I'm from a, um, a transcriber EA. Have you ever thought, I was just wondering about taking your book and making it more um, accessible for the visually impaired? Absolutely. Would you like me to do that this summer to make it more of a tactile uh, visual book? I would love to do that. Um, are you thinking of the My Children's book? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I am. Because um, Let me see if I've got one a copy of a book I've got here. Um, oh, what am I going to do? Um, I made um, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and I'm just wondering about making your book more tactile. I would love to do that. So absolutely. So that uh, way, if you go to any more book talks, you've got something available? That would be so fun. I would love to do that with you. Okay, if I could pour, borrow your book for the summer, yeah. then I'll work on it this summer and I'll get it brailled out for you as well. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, that's Ooh. like the best gift ever. <laughs> Thanks, Pam. Okay. So yes, we have a couple, I think, books in the in the in the go right now. The children's book and then uh, the art of math books as well. So yeah, I feel like this is I'm kind of wrapping this up because I don't want to. You can overwork something, and I, I'm very tempted to right now, and I'm going to try not to because I don't want it to turn uh, the wrong direction. Um, but yes, if you're interested in adding more white to create waves, that's kind of the last tip that I would say. The, the other last tip for the sky is you could pull a little white into the bottoms of your clouds to add a highlight on them um, if you're feeling like the clouds look flat. But I also don't want people to overwork it, overwork it and mess with their colors. So I might do that and then that's the last touch and we can call it a, a night for our Bob Ross um, paint night, right Denny? I think this went yeah. well. We were super stressed because we didn't know how the tech was gonna go and I feel like we've done a lot of things um, in real life and in virtual worlds, but not with people that we don't know all at once. So yeah. I'm gonna add a little bit of a highlight here. Is that what it, with a dry brush as well? Dry, so, it's a dry brush with white. Yeah, okay just along the bottom of the clouds and a little bit in into the center of them. too chunky you can continue to blend and like I can add water here and do circles but you run the risk of overdoing it and then you could just keep painting it and painting it because it's paint so you can keep layering if you want but I don't want to just paint because we have time left I want us to feel like we're in a good place when we we wrap it up so um, I think you should share your screen just for people to see if they wanted to do the math on the on desmos like do you have that or no we could post that later uh, i did have it oh yes i do so um for for those of you who are looking to see sort of where we might take this with i haven't presented not in our work account so let's see how this goes okay it might lock you out it doesn't like work accounts yeah not I'm not in. Okay. Are you able to tell me if you can see Desmos one more? We can see Desmos right now. Um, I think most people, there's the X in that Y. Um, and so if I was drawing this, uh, this is how we give artists and math students creative freedom. They can do whatever they want and then put their image into Desmos and it can turn into this. So it doesn't have to be this. It could be a photograph, it could be a drawing and then we can make the math connections here. But because we all have this image, you'll see the horizon line and the center of the lighthouse. Um, so I can move the image so we can see here that we, we kind of took the painting 
and where that horizon line was, we put that along the x-axis, and then for the symmetry, we put the y-axis right through the middle of the lighthouse. Um, and then, as Laura mentioned before, this is where we could talk about the location of points on some of our lines, have students work with then algebraic formulas to get the equations of lines or analyze someone else's work. Um, and sometimes that ends up for students being a little bit more meaningful because they're doing something that's not the same as somebody else and they have a connection and we've seen students work through more challenging questions because they really wanted um, to, to make the connections to their own artwork and not just questions that we gave them. So it's nice for them to have that personalized um, connection. Yeah. All right. I think I think this is gonna wrap up. Thank you, Jenny, uh, for showing that math connection. I think this is gonna wrap up our night and we hope that you help us share more um, on our Art of Math Ed Facebook, Instagram, uh, on our website. We are super geeks, so we will be adding content all summer because we love this stuff. <laughs> and um, we will be posting in our Facebook group when we are doing our next event. And we look forward, I, uh, Jeff is here, we're gonna be running a camp on July, 16th during the day um, and some other things going on this summer so we'll just keep that updated in our, our Facebook group so without further ado thank you everybody and we hope you had fun thanks we hope you us. had fun thanks for thank sticking out thank a full two hours bye thank you bye thank you thank you thank you <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Yay. Oh, I'm still live on Facebook. Okay, bye, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Signing off. <laughs>